Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today it's the 700th video I've made and I still don't turn the microphone on sometimes, so you have to put up with a bit of voiceover. Today's video is about a new tank, a new tank that I've got for my daughter. We picked it up at a car boot sale recently um, for £10 whole pounds, so it was quite the bargain. It's a lovely little tank, it's got a lid with a feeding hole, so it'll work better than her current abomination which is a pink gravel filled oh, mess of horribleness. So what I'm going to do is try and transform this tank into something that she will really like. Try and put a bit of a nice aquascape in there. Um, make it look something nice and hopefully convince her to move away from the clown puke gravel. Got nothing against it. If she wants to stick with it, that's fine. Um, I'm just giving her a, a wee option. So I'm going to surprise her by doing this tank while she's at school and swapping it over. It's going to take me a while because I'm going to employ a new technique for me. So the new technique is I'm going to create a custom 3D background. So I've seen this in the past, I've done it in the past, I've never really been happy with the results. Um, often the ones you see tried as big blocks of polystyrene or styrofoam where you carve it out and then you go around and paint it with cement and takes up a lot of space, creates a lot of micro particles of polystyrene and I'm not a fan of any of that kind of stuff and it just it's I've never been happy with it and then I saw a video by Stevie P and I'm now going to rip off that video in its entirety because that uses uh, expanding foam and um, I will put a link down in the description please go and watch that it's a lot more informative than this is going to be and I am essentially just copying what he did using slightly different materials because I can't get some of the same things, but I'm using the same principles. So what we're going to do is expanding foam, retard the expansion by putting on some substrate, which also textures the expanding foam, so you get the nice peaks and valleys, as well as some of the sand and bits of substrate in there. Uh, then colour that with some spray paint, and then clear coat it with some lacquer, with some polyurethane cover, uh, and that should give you an aquarium safe background. The reason I'm saying should is because I'm using some slightly different materials, but I'm using the same processes of anything's aquarium safe if you give it a long enough time to cure. Anything should be in inverted commas with a big asterisk. But what a lot of these products will say is things like, um, in fact, one of the ones I use says harmful to aquatic life. But when you actually look into it, and I've done lots of research and gone and visited their websites and sent them emails asking them what they mean is, if you have a fish tank and you spray it in, that will be harmful to the aquatic life. If you spray paint an object, give it enough time to fully cure and put that in the fish tank, you should be fine. But they don't want to put that on the packaging. So copy all this at your own risk, but that's exactly the technique that I'm going for. The premise being that if I give everything a sufficient amount of time to cure, it should be fine. I'm then going to coat everything um, with a polyurethane clear coat which will mostly to hold everything in place, but also to give it that nice bit of extra protection, make it watertight, waterproof. Um, we should be good. So this is how I did it. So it's been about an hour and it's mostly hardened. Um, I'll probably give it a bit longer, but I want to see what it looks like in the first flush. So I kind of generally find the backing. Lift it up, shake off the excess. The neighborhood dogs do not like this. <laughs> um, so that's pretty good. It's kind of like a, a rock texture. So what I'm looking for is any holes or bits that need some reinforcement, but I think we're pretty good there. What do you think? Nice texture. Obviously, this will need painting because you can see some of the foam coming through, but I think with a bit of paint, that texture will look pretty good. Um, there's a possibly a little bit here. So Stephen said to just touch up any areas that were a bit thin or made crevices, but I think we've kind of got away with it. Um, I don't know if you can see the profile of it, there's lots of humps and hills. It's kind of exactly what I was going for, it's perfect. So I'm going to leave this overnight just to let it cure properly 
and then we'll do the spray painting in the morning and see how we get on with that. So I'll come back then. So actually one thing I'm going to do is, if you look at the back of it, it's spilled over a little bit so I'm going to cut round um, because this should be the same size as the tank. I'm going to cut round just make sure it's had another 45 minutes or so to cure a bit more. Give it a test fit and then maybe just give it the first coat of paint that I want to do. And as suggested, it should be fairly easy to just snip off with scissors. Just using this as the line to go with. And it is indeed. And actually cutting into it helps me because I can see that it has gone off. There's no squidgy bits in the middle. It'll harden up more, but you know. So we can see if it does indeed fit in. We need a little bit of persuasion. And it does. So might need the tiniest bit of a trim height wise, but that's kind of perfect fit otherwise. Nice, so. I'll trim this up a little bit more. We'll take off the plastic backing that's attached to it, so we don't need that. But I might leave it on now because it's helping with rigidity. But I'll trim this down and we'll give it the first coat of spray. And then it's just going to be more and more coats of spray, leaving it for, I'm going to leave it for a good few days to make sure it absolutely cures. Because that's what I'm placing most of my trust in, is once these products cure, that it'll be aquarium safe. So we'll see how we get on. I'm going to hit it with the black first and if any of my previous spray painting experience counts I have no previous spray painting experience slow and multiple coats or well, not slow but thin multiple coats this first pass I'm just trying to get all the white bits Obviously do this somewhere with lots of ventilation and all that good stuff. So I'll let that dry, do a few more coats. I've also got a green. Um, I'm just going to try that now just to see what it looks like because I haven't actually seen this spray anywhere yet. I was a bit worried it'd be like a luminous green. Oh, it's all right. I think that will look natural. Although, now that I see it, I'm a bit worried it looks like cyanobacteria. But with some more blacks mixed in, I think we should be good. So I'm going to let this dry overnight, do a few more coats tomorrow, and then just leave it for a few days. Um, so we'll come back once I've got a finished product to show you. Right, a few days later, um, everything's dried and cured. It's had extra curing time because I, one, one tip, it's a bit flimsy, so I picked it up and it snapped. So I had to do a bit of repair work. But can you tell? Can you see where? I don't think so. I think it looks pretty good. So what I did was, in the end, uh, I went with the green base and then covered it over with the black, so, but left some of the green coming through. So hopefully that looks Kind of like a moss covered or algae covered river bank, stone wall, whatever it might be. You can see there's some definition there. I think it looks pretty good. Um, so there's a couple of bits where I've had to do touch ups where I didn't get the same texture. So lesson learned for next time, but from a distance, and I mean, I'm sure when it's underwater, you won't be able to tell. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm now making the thumbnail. What we need to do is, I'm going to put it in the tank now. So the tank's down here. I'm going to silicone it in, and again, just giving it an extra few days of curing time. So overall, I think it'll have had just over a week by the time I'm ready to put water in. It should be good enough. Used an entire tin of clear coat, so I've gone overboard. 
let's see how we get on. So I've laid the tank on its side here. I've got a tube of HA1 or HA6 actually. Um, silicon, it's the same silicon I've used for all my stuff. Just going to give it a liberal blob along the sides. This is just to hold it down in place, make sure nothing gets behind it. So what I don't want is any fish sneaking in, so to speak. So, make sure I've got it the way around I want it, which I think you have. Gently get it in place. Press it down. Like I say, I'm going to give this another two or three days to make sure it's cured silicone wise. It only needs a day, but I'm in no particular rush. And it should end up looking like that. I'm going to lie it down. Leave it open so the air can get at it back in a few days. Okay, we've had a few extra days of curing than planned, thanks to COVID. Who knew that was still a thing in 2024? Um, so we're good to go. It's in, it's solid, um, it's not going anywhere. I've got a few supplies here. I've got some rocks and a couple of little bits of wood. Going for a fairly simple scape, some nice plants, reminiscent of a, a riverbed. So we've got some river pebbles, oh, although not really. I have an idea. Anyway, we'll see how it works. I've got to use my usual plan of getting some gravel in to build a little bit of height, put in my substrate that I want to plant into and then covering it with sand. Because it's quite a dark background, I've gone for quite a light sand, thinking that'll work. Sometimes I like to match the background to the substrate, sometimes I don't. We'll see what we get, how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and create a little bit of depth a fairly open swimming space. I'm probably going to use mostly crypts and maybe some mosses and things like that. Um, but kind of focusing some open area in the middle and having some planting and stuff accentuating to the sides with maybe one big plant in the middle. I don't, don't know yet. We'll see how we go on. But I'll give it a bash and see whether we like it or not. Oh, so old. Remember that fish tank you got at the carpet sale? Yeah. Well, I've made you a nice looking tank with nice natural plants. I've moved all your fish over and I want to see what you think. Okay. Ready? Oh, it's cool. So Where's got... all the pink? <laughs> we haven't put any pink petals, but some of those plants are called pitchy pink. The cryptocorians, they'll grow big and get red and pink colours in them. But they're and not pink now. They're not pink now, no. But the background, that's a one of a kind. I made that myself. No one else has got that. It's completely unique to you. All your fish are in. Come here, the pink. The pink um, gravel. <laughs> you want the pink gravel? Yeah. It's meant to be like a natural beauty thing. You don't get pink gravel in the natural world. You get pink coral. Uh, it's fresh water. That doesn't matter. So you want to add the pink in? Yeah. I guess we have our answer. Pink. So I've actually left this with the the heater and the two sponge filters in there, but I don't really like the sponge filters, but I'm not sure. I've never been able to find one that I'm happy with, an internal filter that wasn't a sponge filter. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, partial success. That one's having ginormous poo, and the one at the back is fat and is having probably is pregnant probably. And so I guess it's a bit of a hit. She quite likes it, yes. but not enough pink. So we'll get this one completely broken down, wash out the pink gravel, and you can do what you want. Just give it a little bit of sparkle. If you like this kind of thing, click that subscribe button. Uh, come and join me on a Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time. Leave a comment. Would you add pink gravel to this or would you leave it as is? I don't well, know. Oh yeah, you need to add good pink. Thank you, bye.